Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this classic board game? This is a shiny new copy of Downfall of Pimp Pompeii. Can you escape the Inferno? This is a classic from Mayfair Games. This is the second printing of the game. The original printing was in a much larger flat box. It's the second printing that it does involve one expansion rule, which is double-sided tiles. You can pick how you play. Uh, my wife managed to find a copy of this at Princess Auto in Canada at bargain basement prices. I had played my friend Jamie's copy before, really enjoyed it, and always kind of wanted to own my own copy. But I like to do unboxing videos. I like to show off what you get in the box before I open my games. And I figure why not share that unboxing experience with y'all. So what I'm gonna do now is crack open my copy of Downfall of Pompeii. Uh, what I do have to do is cut the shrink off. I will quickly point out that this is for age 10 plus, I would say younger. The only reason it's 10 year olds is you're worried about people swallowing little cubes and some of the components. This, uh, well, and the, and the theme, if you're okay with the theme, you are having people getting consumed by lava and pyroclastic flows. So that might be another reason you don't want to play for kids, but I would call this a family weight game. This is not a big heavy euro. Uh, it does play two to four players with games taking, I don't know, what did they say, about 45 minutes? That sounds about right from what I know. All right, so I'm going to crack the shrink on this, throw it down on the table, and you can see with me what you get in a shiny new copy of The Downfall of Pompeii from Mayfair Games. Here you have my shiny new copy of Downfall of Pompeii. Unlike some cool mini or not uh, Kickstarters, I don't think the components are going to wow you here, but they're very fun functional. So here we have the rule book, which of course goes first to explain exactly why um, you'd be playing a game about Pompeii and what's interesting about what happened there. Then we have a fantastic rule summary here, or sorry, component summary, showing everything you get in the box and the board. You've got a gameplay overview. You've got a really nice two column with one column being your text and two column being your reference here on how to set it up. And it sticks with that. So your how to play is in one column and then your examples are in another. You don't tend to see this in rule books anymore, which I kind of miss it. This was a big Rio Grande Mayfair game thing back in the day. Uh, same thing here, you got lots of examples. From what I remember, if this is like any other classic games, once you've learned to play, you can basically just read through the second column to get a refresher. Nice short rule book. We are looking at a grand total of only eight pages. And that includes the credits and there is the dual vent variant included. So you can kind of see the dual vent variant is something included with this new second edition. Next, we have a ton of people, a bonus bag. I always like getting bonus baggies. That's a nice touch. So these are your bag full of people, which I'm gonna want the baggie because they're not in a Ziploc now. So what you have are the three player colors here, four, sorry, four player colors, right here. So you have blue, red, black, and yellow cylinders. And what I like is they are technically octagon, so they're not gonna roll away on you. These represent your people that you'll be placing on the board and then potentially later consuming with volcano lava. So what I'm gonna do here, I hope you don't mind. Nah, you know, I don't want these to dump everywhere, so I am gonna throw this in this baggie. So thank you for the bag, Mayfair. All right, you got a baggie. This you're gonna draw lava tiles from. You got cards. These are gonna determine where you're gonna play. Oh, these are well sealed. Thankfully I have a trusty hobby knife nearby. Unfortunately, nothing to actually hold the cards at this point. But you know what? Being a board gamer, I have baggies around all the place. So you have cards here. A little bit of a warp to them. Note, this is an older game. I don't think that's going to affect the game at all. I'll just make sure I riffle shuffle a couple times backwards. You are looking at various colors and symbols. And if it's in a two, three, or four player game, that's what's at the bottom here. And basically these, you're going to draw and they tell you where you can place your people. And technically, like the brown represents a gladiatorial arenas. And then you have the omen that things are going to erupt, and then the two cards where the eruption actually starts happening. That's how you split from putting people out to putting out even more people and spreading across the city to running away. And what's really nice is the camera is really picking up the very interesting textured effect on the volcano piece. So here you have the volcano, which is actually made of plastic. And it's got a, a glossy coating and it's all divoted, like you can really see it there. 
in the video and you literally just wrap this around and tuck in the do I have to split this first? Yeah, that hadn't been split. And then tuck these into this end. And that one into there. Boom, I made a volcano. Simple enough. Easy to do. You watch me do it. We're going to put that aside for a moment because we're going to need it in a second. When we grab the board. So before I throw out the board, these are the lava tiles. Uh, it's pretty simple. You draw a lava tile from the bag. It tells you where to place it. If there's already a tile there, you place next to it. If you cover up people, they go in the volcano. Fairly simple gameplay. I was going to say I'm missing a piece, but no, it's just popping out. They should be the same on both sides, except for these are the three bonus tiles you wouldn't have in the first printing of the game. So these are actually a new addition. You could get them as a promo for the original, but Mayfair now includes it in the base game. Now I'm going to take all this and put it back in because the board, I'm going to see if I can fit it on this table without having to zoom out. So it's not a huge board, but it's also not tiny. So here we have the board. Perfect. It does fit. So one of the things people don't always notice about this board is this is a punch out. You get rid of that, you put the volcano underneath, and look at that shiny volcano board. You got a nice piece here that you could possibly use for something else. I don't know. So that's it. There's the board. Here, I'll slide it so you don't see the corner. You got the cool plastic volcano piece in the corner, which I got to say for a classic game that came out many years ago, it's, it's a nice touch. I actually think that's a cool component. Like this was originally released in 2004, the first printing, and it also had the plastic volcano. So here you have the thing, there's the different colors. You're gonna draw a card, it's gonna tell you where to put people. You're gonna keep doing that until the volcano erupts and then your people are gonna try to run out the gates. That's basically the a really quick overview of gameplay. Downfall of Pompeii, and I gotta say for a game from 2004, this still looks really nice. Component quality was as expected on the positive side. You don't tend to get a ton of wooden components, but there is nothing wrong with these. They're easy to pick up. They're not too small and they're not gonna roll. Card quality, it's really simple. It really easily gives you what you need to know. It's more functional than really great looking, but that works. And then the lava tiles, they, they are what they are. To me, they're, they're kind of my least favorite part of it because they all have basically the same repeating patterns on them. But it's pretty easy to see where to place them based on the symbols on the corner. And they have made every symbol uniquely shaped in place there are colorblind issues. So that's it. What you get in the box for Downfall of Pompeii, classic Mayfair Games game from 2004, still in the top 150 family games on Board Game Geek after all this time. I think the cool plastic volcano is a big selling point for people. Now what I'd be tempted to use this for, a RPG as well. So everything's back in the box. No, I didn't pack it the best possible way. The board should be at the bottom, but it works for now. There you have what you get in the box for Downfall of Pompeii. So I have been a fan of Downfall and Pompeii for a number of years. I couldn't tell you exactly when I first played it, but I do know it was the first printing. The game was originally printed in 2004 from Mayfair Games, so it's a true classic. This is the second printing that we just unboxed. I am really looking forward to playing this. Uh, simple, pretty simple, pretty straightforward gameplay, uh, at least to learn. But then you've got that whole planning ahead and where do you put your people and what do you cover with the volcano and is it worth losing one of your pawns to take out someone else's and so on. Engaging gameplay that has kept this in top family games of all time. So that was me opening up my copy of The Downfall of Pompeii from Mayfair Games, which is still available in stores to this day. And this is one I recommend you pick up if you like family weight games. As long as you don't mind the whole theme of people running away from an exploding volcano. So I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And I invite you to check out our webpage, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find other unboxing videos, of course, but also reviews and answers to your gaming or game night questions in our Ask the Bellhop segment. My most recent article was about solo fantasy games. So you can find that over at the blog. But if you've got a question for me, if you have something you want to know about gaming or game nights or board game collection curation, fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Go to that webpage, hit Ask the Bellhop, or hit me up on social media where I can be found everywhere. It's Tabletop Bellhop, one word. That's it for this unboxing. Thank you very much for joining me for this. I hope you got a kick out of checking out a classic game. We're pretty much never about the new hotness at Tabletop Bellhop, and this just proves it. Good day and game on.